Okay, another question got asked. I may not need that. Okay. The question was, it seemed, or it did finally come out in a question. It seems like there are, uh, there is a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament to some because of what they see in the Old Testament compared to what is in the New Testament. And so I want to endeavor to help, help some people with that. And if you have um, the desire to or want to, if you want to write some things down so that you can help other people, that would uh, have this nagging question. Uh, it comes down to why does God seem so harsh in the Old Testament? And... Uh, Malachi 3.6 is the first verse that I thought of. God says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He promised Jacob he would never wipe them off the map, that he would always leave a remnant. And so when he's saying, I change not, he's saying, I don't change my promises. I'm, I'm the same from the from uh, beginning to end, which we know he was before the beginning, but and so there's a it seems hard to look at that verse and then see and read all the way through the Old Testament and see all that judgment and justice that God carried out upon nations, and then see Jesus supposing to be God in the flesh come down to earth and all He is is love. Grace. and I mean, he people were pulling His hair out and spitting on Him and punching Him and he, driving the nails in His hands. He's loving them and asking the Father to forgive them. Why the two different natures? It, it's, a, it's a problem for some. There's some stories in the Old Testament that are really hard to take especially after seeing Jesus in the New Testament that is the embodiment of love, grace, sacrifice, long-suffering, even with His enemies. And it leaves some scratching their heads. First of all, we have to understand that the Old Testament covers about 4,000 years of history. And the New Testament covers about 90 to 100 years. And uh, we can see in the New Testament that character that we see in Christ was always there in God. And we can see it scattered throughout the Old Testament but there are more attributes to God's character than what we see from Matthew to Jude before Revelation. Because Revelation is all Old Testament again. It's the same wrath that was before. We see it in the book of Revelation. He's, uh, we see in Revelation the wrath of the Lamb. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Um, Hebrews 13.8, that my next one? No, James 1.17, should have went here first. This just showing how God doesn't change. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's the same one. Another way of saying He doesn't change. Like a, a ring that you wear on your finger depends on how you turn it, how it looks. There's none of that with God. He doesn't change with turning. 
at all. He's the same all the time. But Hebrews 13.8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And some would say uh, or desire to just know of the forgiveness of God and throw out half the Bible because they don't want to see God as a just judge. But God couldn't be a loving God if He didn't judge evil. Think about these men that keep getting turned loose, that are coming over the border and the liberal judges are just turning them loose to go and rape more women and hurt more people and they get arrested like ten times in a week and they just keep getting turned loose. That should anger us, shouldn't it? It's the same with God. You, if Say if your daughter or niece or nephew or, or anybody, just think if your children are hurt by someone, you want justice. You want to see that person get what's coming to them so they can't do it to somebody else. It's not necessarily that you just you hate them and you want revenge, like this guy you're talking about that wanted to pray for the shooter. You know, that's, he still would want the shooter to get caught and go to jail, you know, and so that he couldn't hurt anybody. Uh, this is, God has got more than one attribute, and he can't have the first attribute of mercy and love without judgment and justice. Because he can't love you right if he lets somebody keep hurting you. And I know that goes on here in this world all the time. But one day, everybody's going to get their judgment. Some people get it sooner than others, but it is coming to them. It's never our job to judge. Never. Not in that way. I mean, we have to judge things all the time. We've got to judge every situation to know whether or not we need to be a part of it or how to uh, counsel someone in something. That's not what I mean. But we're not the judge. We should never be wrathful. That day's coming. And uh, these uh, judges that keep turning people loose, we would call them unjust judges. Granted, God is long-suffering in this world. We see people getting by with stuff, but He, he does um, have to do justice for the rest of humanity. That's what all, when He wipes out all the wicked of the world, it's for those that did choose Him to receive their inheritance. God doesn't enjoy seeing the wicked die. He doesn't enjoy seeing them have, having to go to hell. It's His love for others, His love for His children that do do what's right, as far as choosing Him. Even though they're not perfect, they're, they're, it's like they're perfect because they've chosen Him. And so to love them, He has to do away with the bad. Just like we would do with our own kids. If we love our kids, we're going to make sure there's not things around them to hurt them. <clears throat> That's what we see with the, uh, the seven nations that he drove out using the children of Israel. And Sodom and Gomorrah, they were there for 600 years. I wonder how long God's long suffered with their wickedness before His wrath was kindled. And if we see why His wrath was kindled, this will help us, I believe. Let's see, this is still talking about Jesus, and I should have went here already. It said Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and how long? Forever. And all we know at that point is His grace, His love, His mercy, but look at how He's coming back. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, 
and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. That's not what we're used to seeing with Jesus. But there's coming a time when he is going to make war against the wicked. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. That's where the judgment comes from, the Word of God. And he's clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. That's talking about Armageddon. He comes through there in Armageddon, and he's sparing nothing. And so, then, in Exodus 22, this was the law. This is why God judges, and why why He is a just God. And it's not God's fault that judges don't do what they're supposed to. You know, He gave us human government. He gave us the ability to try to put people in office that would do right. It's it's never God's fault that these things happen. We get lax in the way we want to do things. We want things to be easy on us. So we allow some easier people to get in there. And the next thing you know, it's biting us in the tush. Because we want things easier for us. And it ends up biting us. But this is why he has to judge. Look at this law from Exodus 22. It says, Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And I want us to recognize this is to his people. He says, This is what I'll do to you, my people, if you do this to people. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry and my wrath shall wax hot. You see that? And I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. It's always about His love for the innocent, you see. That's the way we should be. But but we shouldn't have wrath and wax hot. We're not the judge. We don't stand in that position. We're... We're to have His love all over us. Let's look at this one. This is um, where... Let's see, I thought I had the Sodom and Gomorrah one in here somewhere. Did I not put that one in here? Oh. I passed by it. You've seen that next. Maybe it's good that I went there first. Talking about if they cry at all unto me. And then we see in the, the Sodom and Gomorrah story. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. See that cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, that means the people crying against it. People uh, that traded with them. People that were... Um, being taken by Sodom and Gomorrah, we see in other places where Sodom were men stealers. They would, they were trafficking people. But it says, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. The cry cries that God was hearing. Now, God doesn't have to send somebody to make sure this is happening. This is Him obeying His own word. There having to be two or three witnesses for everything. So He sends these angels down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what happened with the angels. The men of Sodom, what they desired to do. And so... And this place existed 600 some years, best I can tell from reading through the Scripture. How long were they like they were? And how long did God try to give them a messenger 
to turn before he had to do what he had to do there. And then that, that shows the what God does to those that cry, or those that are being cried against, should say. And then this is a story of Moses is up on the mountain and uh, God says if you'll, because Moses was saying, I want to see you. I want to see your face. I want to see what you look like. And he said, you'll die if you see my face. But it I'll put you in a cleft of a rock and I'll pass by you and you'll see my back parts. And then this is what Moses heard. This is what the Lord said when he's, he's passing by Moses. In the Old Testament, this is very early on. This is the law. This is what God says about Himself. He says, And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. Sometimes we get to thinking you only see that in the New Testament, but God's proclaiming it about Himself this early. He says, this is my, my best foot forward, or my first foot forward. This is what I am. I am full of mercy, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. See, he's saying, I'm also just. The guilt, those that do not ask for forgiveness will not be cleared. Because then he's not merciful and good and all that to the other group, you see. So he, he, you can see how he hasn't changed. This is what we see in the New Testament. Because we see Jesus coming back in Revelation and judging all those that didn't choose him. So he's the same. We just see 4,000 years of history and we see wrath, wrath, wrath. But it's... Wrath after 400 years. Wrath after 500 years. Wrath after 600 years. Do you see that? And uh, the New Testament, we see a, it's just 100 years. And I think that's because it's the lifespan, about the lifespan of a person. Any of you in here think you'll live to be 100? 70? You don't normally live over 100. You know, in this day and age. But, so, for sure all of your life, you know, you can be like all of the New Testament. Where it's, it's about 70 years up to the book of Revelation and then you've got your 90 and 100 years from there. So it's kind of like the, your lifetime. There's never going to be a time that you run out of mercy. Does that make sense? Your lifetime is to be full of of what Jesus lived on this earth. You're not to be the judge and take out wrath on people. In your lifetime, you're, you're good. If God can go 400 years before He takes out a, a nation, and we'll see, I think I put this verse in here. I think it might be the next one. This is the next few verses after this. He tells Moses what he's going to do with him and the children of Israel. This great thing he's going to do with them. He says, and he said, behold, I'll, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. That was his goal in doing what he was going to do with the children of Israel. So that people would see his glory. And he says, For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite 
and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Another place he said, I drove out seven nations that were stronger and mightier than you. But this is where people get tripped up because when those times actually come, when we see the children of Israel marching to this destination, women and children are being killed, all the animals, everything is being wiped out in these places. And every time they didn't, those people that they didn't wipe out came back to bite them later because they were of the other side. They were of the serpent's seed. Literally, they had this. They they had disobeyed what they knew to do be right for so long. Just like you see in America, the wickedness that has sprouted up in America. When it you look at how it started, how America started, and the wickedness that has sprouted up in it, the things they do to kids. I mean, you wouldn't think you'd ever see that in a Christian-born nation, would you? Think about. Our nation going for 400, 500, 600 years with man's reasoning. This is what we see this. I think I got this next. Yeah, this is, that was Exodus 34. That's God speaking to Moses saying what he will do with those people, with the children of Israel. And then this was God giving this to Abraham 400 some years earlier when God is making the covenant with Abraham. It says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. He's talking about when they go into Egypt. Verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. We know that happened at the Red Sea. All those that was chasing after the children of Israel, they died in the Red Sea. I was just telling somebody about that today. You can go there to this day and scuba dive down in there and see all those chariot wheels and chariot parts on the floor of the Red Sea. And right on the other side of the Red Sea, you can see the real Mount Sinai is right there across. The world tries to tell you it's over in Egypt where they found that uh, corrupt uh, scripture, the uh, manuscripts. And, uh, but the real Mount Sinai is, is right there where they crossed the Red Sea. You can see it. The top of it is black. Because God came down on the top of that mountain, all the stuff at the base of the mountain is still there that you see in the Scripture. It's just word for word. What you see in the Scripture is all still there. God preserved it. The Saudi Arabians, they they didn't want anybody to see that for the longest time because it proves the Bible. So they put a great big fence around it and anybody caught in there got arrested. They've just now recently opened that up to tourism. People can get in there now. They've got a different leader over there. He's the one that's getting ready to make all the peace pacts with Israel, changing everything. It's all there. But he said in verse 14, And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace... Till in Abraham he'll die. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Meaning that land, the promised land. And look at this last line. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. This would be about, this is like, 500 years before the children of Israel are back there wiping out the Amorites. The Amorites are already bad right here. God gives them another 500 years, that much longer of a chance to turn before He uses the children of Israel to come in there 
and wipe them out. I'm showing you all this is because God was the same back then. He wanted people to turn to Him. You see that? We, we don't see it that way because we read through this, uh, these sections of the Bible and we see wrath and judgment and justice coming down upon them. We don't see these 500, 600 years of grace. And oh, God sent angels to these places. That's why they ended up, these angels, some of them ended up falling, loving the human women, having the giants. You know, that's how all that took place. God was sending angels to these lands to speak the Word of God to them. Angels died. Uh, angels died. Angels fell. They fell. And so they had their chances to get right. They just chose their own wicked desires, just like man does today. It's, it's nothing different as today. Nothing, man hasn't changed, and God hasn't changed. This is what God's heart is. This is what it was back then. This is what it is during the book of Revelation. We're going through it on Sunday morning. We're going to get to where about after every chapter, we're going to see where God asks the people to repent. Please repent. And it says they would not. Then the next round of judgments come. But this is His heart. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. You know, in our lives, we, we would kind of like to see some wicked people. You know how people will show up to their... Um, somebody's getting ready to get electrocuted. They'll have People will show up and want to sit and watch that person. That's not the heart of God. He does not. It seems so harsh the way the Bible says that this is what's going to take place. But that's to get in our minds thinking about His justice so that we'll love the lost, so that we'll reach the lost. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from His way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? And he's talking to his own people. Why will ye die? And I mean, it's his own people, but they have fallen after the gods of the nations around them. So they're still the house of Israel, but they're not living a believing life. Just turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will you die? This is the attitude that we're supposed to have. Even though uh, we think about Hamas killing all those children, man, I just want them to get justice, don't you? We should want them to get justice so that doesn't happen to anybody else. But shouldn't we want them to have a chance to choose right. That's where it's at. Hope this has helped somebody in understanding that God hasn't changed and that uh, there's never a time in our life when we should get to the place to where we pour out our wrath on somebody. If we could live 500, 600 years, maybe. Maybe. but I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Let's pray tonight. Lord, thank You for this. Help us to have understanding in this and to be able to help other people with it. We, uh, maybe some of us was thinking this same thing and just never knew how to explain it. Maybe tonight we see clearly that You have always been the same. You've always had that grace that Jesus exhibited. It just wasn't revealed in that way. And it couldn't be. 
We understand by reading the New Testament, if it would have been revealed completely, they never would have killed him. We'd never have the blood of the Lamb to place upon the souls of men. That plan was perfect. And I exalt it. And thank you so much for it. Now help us to take hold of that and want to give it. Give it out even to those that we may not see as deserving of it. Not one of us is deserving of it. Help us use it. Lord, bless us tonight. Give us a good time of fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right.